Images from a recent return visit for Honor Flight Maine. Vets from World War II, Korea, and Vietnam were greeted by Garrison Command Sergeant Major Andre Welch and dozens of service members. Hello and welcome to Meet Week. I'm Brian Spann. Also this week, a look at this year's Holocaust Remembrance. We visit the 3rd Infantry's Quezon Platoon and news from MWR. These stories and more, but first in a recent newscast, we announced the delivery of seven resiliency services kiosks that were set up around the post. All seven kiosks are now online. They're part of a $3.6 million gift from the Fort Meade Alliance Foundation's renovation of Hune Hall into the Fort Meade Education and Resiliency Center. We spoke with former Fort Meade Garrison Commander Ken McCready, a member of the Alliance Board, about how the kiosks fit into the Kuhn Hall project. The Kuhn Hall construction really revolves around uh, enhancing the resiliency uh, capacity of Fort Meade to care for soldiers sailors, airmen, marines, coast guardsmen, and their families. Uh, what the kiosk does is move uh, information outside the walls of that, of that building and connects uh, families and service members to the five pillars of, of resiliency, that being family, uh, mental, social, um, physical, and spiritual. So what the kiosks then do as they're spread around the entire community is provide an instant uh, connectivity for families and service members to resources both on post and in the community. We'll have more with Colonel McCready on the status of the Kuhn Hall renovation on our next show. Meanwhile, the 780th Military Intelligence Brigade and the Fort Meade Equal Opportunity Office hosted this year's Holocaust Days of Remembrance Observance at Club Meade. This year's guest speaker was Jeff Robbins from the 3G DC organization. The group is made up of grandchildren of Holocaust survivors. And eventually, the Jewish population was limited to living in small portions and quarters of the cities. So Radom is one of the cities, and this was the ghettos were created. And this was to control the flow of the Jewish people, to prevent them from being able to go to certain places, um, to be able to limit the population and what they could do. This was all part of what the Germans called the final solution. What was the final solution of? The final solution was to address the problem of the Jewish people. You can watch the entire ceremony on the 780th Facebook page at facebook.com slash 780-M-I-B-D-E. Meanwhile, on this week's edition of our podcast, Fort Meade Declassified, a conversation with Fort Meade Senior Commander Major General Alan Pepin, Commander Joint Task Force National Capital Region and the Army Military District of Washington. You can find Fort Meade Declassified just about anywhere you get your podcasts. In a related story, after the General's interview, we had the opportunity to go to Fort Myer, Virginia and visit with the 3rd Infantry Regiment's Quezon Platoon. Every day, the soldiers of the Old Guard conduct up to eight full honors funerals at Arlington National Cemetery. They were gracious enough to take some time out to give our cameras a quick tour of the Quezon Stables. As we go throughout the barn, you'll notice uh, the different stalls, different horses, different squads of horses. Um, going down the line, uh, to, to maintain accountability of our horses, you'll see a lot of the same colored horses on the same side. That's to, like I said, maintain accountability um, by squad because there are four different squads that go out to the cemetery, four different squads of soldiers, four different squads of horses. And so a soldier like me will be assigned to a certain squad, and that will be assigned to a certain horses. Uh, the mission of the Quezon Platoon today is to escort our fallen heroes into Arlington National Cemetery and to uh, do whatever types of ceremonies and, and different things that are required for us in, in the military district of Washington and uh, around the country. And finally this week, a few reminders from MWR. First, a reminder about the upcoming youth job fair at Mead High. The fair will feature more than 50 potential employers. It's for ages 14 to 21 and is scheduled for Thursday, May 26th from 4.30 to 7.30 p.m. at the Mead High School gym. And more youth news from MWR. Registration is now open for Child and Youth Services Summer Day Camp. You can register at www.militarychildcare.com. For more information, contact School Age Center 1 or 2. And one final note from MWR. You may have noticed that their Facebook page went missing for a couple of weeks. They're happy to announce that the Fort Meade MWR Facebook page is up and running. You can find them at facebook.com slash Fort Meade MWR. And that's Meade Week for this week. I'm Brian Spann. For everyone at Meade TV and the Fort Meade Public Affairs Office, have a great weekend and a great Meade Week.